Good evening and welcome, well good afternoon and welcome to evening prayer. Here we are again in the tent at three o'clock. And I'll just light the candles. You'll see this week we've got some uh, slightly more robust candles. But just don't tell Chrissy. Because I whipped them out from inside the house. See if this one wants to light. There we go. This now doesn't want to turn off. Oh, there we go. That's that. So shall we bow our heads as we uh, come before the Lord in prayer? The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise forever. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek forgiveness for our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. And now we're going to make up a time of repentance. So in this time, if we just think about the week that's gone ahead of us, or the week that's just gone, and just bring to mind those things that maybe didn't go quite so well, things that uh, we didn't perform quite as we should have done, those moments which uh, we feel could have gone better. And we just bring them in front of the Lord and lay them at the foot of the cross and ask him to take those moments away from us and so we can continue in prayer covered by the blood of Jesus Christ that we can go forward sinless. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing in our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess and we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct us to what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly. With you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sin. Heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. You led your people to freedom by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. May we who walk in the light of your presence acclaim your Christ rising victorious as he banishes all darkness from our hearts and minds. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The day is almost over, and the evening has come. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, 
so may your Spirit come down upon us to set us free to sing your praise for ever and ever. Amen. This evening's psalm is quite a short one. Psalm 133, just three verses. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It's like precious oil poured on the head, running down the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life for evermore. Amen. Our reading today is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to a region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was only, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall under their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And a daughter was healed at that moment. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, for ever. Amen. Shall we continue with our creed, as we speak it out together, although we are in many places, we can say it in unison, and declare our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come into your presence. Even though we might not feel like we belong in it. Even though we feel far from you. We come into your presence and we seek healing and unity and your peace. Lord God, meet us where we're at. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Father of heaven, we pray for all those who got their exam results, their A-level results, this week. 
we pray that it will lead them on to great things. That you will inspire them and help them focus and see their path forward. That even though they've got their results under strange times, that these results will be affirming to what they should be doing. That the college and universities they seek to go for, go to, will be prepared for them. That these places which they will educated be in will be ready for them when the time comes. And Lord God, we pray that they will go in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, as we think about those countries further afield that are having spikes in the virus, those countries which are not recovering particularly well, we pray that you will be with them, that you will be with their governments, that you will be You'll give them wisdom and strength and they will be able to perceive the way forward in all this. Lord, we pray that you will guide them and give them the wisdom they need to make the right decisions. And Lord, we pray for all those who are coming back from holidays, maybe those who are coming back ahead of schedule, or we pray for those who are coming back to find they're in uh, a fortnight of lockdown. We pray that you will be with them, guide them and strengthen them wherever they may be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask you that you guide us, that you strengthen us, and that you will hold us in the coming week. Amen. And the prayer for today, Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage, never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we join together in our Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so if we look at today's reading, we find Jesus with his disciples and this Canaanite woman is coming and pleading with him. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me, she's crying out. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. And we would have thought in our mind's eye, that Jesus would 
have compassion on her. That Jesus would instantly have that, uh, you know, he would look at her with love in his eyes and say, she is healed. But Matthew says something quite different. He answers her, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. When we think of Jesus, well, when I think of Jesus, I think about him opening up um, God's message to the world. He gave out the Holy Spirit. And it's odd to think that he was sent for the people of Israel. He was sent for his own people, the people that rejected him, the people who put him on the cross. But that's who he was sent to talk to. He was sent to give them hope. He was sent to give them life. And once he'd offered that to them, he could then offer it to the rest of the world through the Holy Spirit, through the apostles' teaching after his death. He couldn't do it while he was alive, but once he had died on the cross and the veil of the temple torn in two, his, the ministry opened up to the ends of the earth. Isn't that wonderful? They opened up the ministry of Jesus. But it's a strange thought that he could, it could only happen after his death. But the woman knows Jesus. She's seen his work. She's heard the rumours. She knows what Jesus is all about. And she pleads with him. This is her hope. Her hope that uh, Jesus will heal her daughter. Lord, help me, she says. Lord, help me. He turns again to her and says back, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. I find it hard to imagine Jesus saying this. I find it hard to think that he could say that to somebody. But, He seems to be testing her slightly. Maybe he knew what she was already going to come back and say. Maybe he wanted the Jews to know more firmly that he came specially for them and not for the Gentiles straight away. He came predominantly to give the lost sheep of Israel their uh, the message. The message that to love one another, to put your the living God before all other gods. It's just it seems very foreign that he says this thing. It is not right to keep the children's to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. But here we are, it's written down in Matthew's Gospel. But she says something marvellous in response. You'd expect her to disagree, you'd expect her to say, okay, well that's fine then, you've come for them, I'm off. She agrees with him. She says, yes, It is, Lord. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. They hear the words, they still hear the words, the rumours have spread of Jesus' good words, his good works, his teachings, spread far and wide and reached the ear of this Gentile woman, this Canaanite.
and she's heard this. And Jesus, it's as if he's astounded. Woman, you have great faith. What a wonderful thing to say to somebody. Woman, you have great faith. I would love Jesus to say, Phil, you have great faith. To me. And her reward for her great faith, her ward, reward, that, uh, that she's heard the words and they, she stored them in her heart. Her daughter was healed straight away. This woman treasured what Jesus was talking about, treasured the things she'd heard about him. She held on to everything that he said. And her hope was that he could heal her daughter. And he did it. Her hope became a truth. Now what hopes do you have? What hopes do you have that the Lord Jesus can do? What hopes do you have that the holy power of the Holy Spirit could fill in and flood them and make them a reality? Hold on to those hopes. And lift them up to God in prayer. For what was once the word to the Jews has now become the word to the Gentiles as well, to words to you and me been released to the four corners of the earth. And all now know, or all are now, hopefully will hear that Jesus is their Saviour, that the Holy Spirit is their Advocate, that together they walk with us through life. And when we need them, we can lean on them. When we cry out to them, they hear us. No longer is this preserved for the Jewish race. But we can all enjoy the life-saving words of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so... Leaves me with the blessing. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Go and enjoy the word of Jesus gave us. Go and be free in his presence and declare it to the world.